Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us today for this uh, WinCom webinar. Um, today, Greg Corey from FreeWave will be presenting um, the Zoom family of industrial radios. Um, Greg will take questions. If you want to submit your questions by chat any time during the session, um, please send them in and he will look at the questions at the end. Um, Greg, are you ready to go? I am. Can you hear me? Yes, hear you good. Great. Sounds good. We'll go ahead and get started then. All right. Thanks for joining us today. My name is Greg Corey, and I'm the Director of Customer and Technical Support for FreeWave Technologies. Today, we're going to be talking about FreeWave overall, the types of radio solutions FreeWave offers, and we're going to be talking about the Zoom product family in detail. To start that discussion, we're going to talk about who FreeWave is as a company. So FreeWave has been around for over 26 years now. We have over 3,000 customers across 32 countries, and we specialize in long-range connectivity in challenging RF environments. So with wireless, there's always the right tool for the right type of job, and FreeWave has really made a name for itself in these applications that require long range, reliable connectivity, typically to outdoor assets in the machine to machine type applications. So FreeWave is historically a radio company. And within the past few years, FreeWave has started to move more towards an edge computing company. So you may have heard the term edge computing thrown around. And what that means is we have an ability to process information at the edge of our networks. So think of FreeWave radios, specifically the Zoom family, as the smart radio of the long range radio world. Not only are we sending and receiving data, but we're able to interact with that data to make decisions based upon it and also display and trend that data. Throughout all of these products we're going to be talking about today, everything that FreeWave uh, designs is manufactured at our facility in Boulder, Colorado. So we're definitely proud to be a made in the USA company. The next slide here is some of our customers that we've kept close to us over the 26 years we've been in business. So FreeWave specializes in many different industrial verticals government and defense, oil and gas, electric, utilities, water, wastewater, smart ag, municipal, manufacturing. What all of these customers have in common is they have a need for long range connectivity between field assets. And in addition to that long range connectivity, they also have a requirement for reliability, for specific temperature ranges, and maybe even power consumption if the applications are solar powered. So what is the value proposition of wireless? So why would somebody choose to go wireless over using physical cabling? The first key point is the cost of installing physical cabling. So if you have to rent a trenching machine and you have to have a, a workforce crew of three to four people, obviously there's time and resources involved with that. So sometimes it's cost prohibitive to run physical cabling in certain environments. The second point is that troubleshooting wired systems can be complex. I have a number of friends that uh, work in plant facilities where wiring has been changed and moved you know, over the past 20 years and sometimes their wiring cabinets are a mess and they don't have a good map of their current you know, wiring system. So when you're dealing with physical wires, um, they can be moved, they can be disturbed, and depending on who installed that system, they may or may not be orderly. Thirdly is the reliability. I'm sure if you've worked in industry long enough, you've heard stories about communications being interrupted because a cable was cut accidentally and that can result in downtime. So due to the non-physical nature of wireless, we can offer more reliability than a physical medium that can be disturbed. 
the distances that you can cover with wireless um, is much greater than physical cabling. And this is probably the biggest selling point for using wireless over physical cabling. Some of the distances that FreeWave covers, um, it's just not possible to run physical cabling that far. So a lot of Wi-Fi systems will measure their range in feet or meters. A lot of FreeWave applications are measured in miles. So it's not uncommon to see five to 10 miles of wireless connectivity with a FreeWave system. And five to 10 miles is just something you're not going to accomplish with a normal wiring system. Lastly, on the advantages and the value proposition of using wireless, we can do more than traditional cabling can do. So with traditional cabling, it's just data in, data out. It's pretty simple. With industrial radios, as I mentioned, the edge capability, FreeWave offers the smart radio of the industrial radio world. So we're not just sending and receiving data, but we're able to interact with that data. To put this into the big picture here, here's an application example where you would see FreeWave radios used in smart water management. So in water wastewater, you have a number of assets spread across many miles that need to be monitored. Um, this can be accomplished using the FreeWave Zoom product. So the FreeWave Zoom product is natively serial and ethernet, but there's additional capability for IO. So you could attach a high level sensor, for example, to a Zoom Edge unit that could talk to a Zoom Link network. Once you get to the gateway radio, that could be at a tower, it could be located at an office location where there's fiber, or maybe even connected to a cell modem. From the gateway, you could then jump to the cloud for your dashboard analytics and reporting. The second example here is for SmartAg. So Freeway partners with a number of companies in SmartAg, and SmartAg is a fairly generic category. There's a lot of different use cases for wireless technology. One of those use cases is GPS RTK. So using ground stations to narrow down the granularity of GPS tracking. So we know with traditional GPS that you have, like you have on your phone, you can get within like 50 feet of accuracy. But by using ground modules, in addition to GPS, you can get the location down to a couple of inches of tolerance there. So that's known as GPS RTK correction. So FreeWave does have solutions for ground stations that are transferring that corrected GPS data there. So that's a big application for Smart Ag. There are other applications in monitoring different processes in agriculture. So we could be monitoring the health of a tractor. Uh, we could be monitoring different vibrations. We could be monitoring processes that are occurring on a trailer um, that's being towed by a tractor. Uh, could be level sensors for water tanks and things like that. There are many different combinations of uh, data points that you'll see in Smart Ag. And FreeWave has a pretty strong footprint in this arena. Getting into the products themselves here. So the Zoom family is FreeWave's current industrial radio. And the Zoom family has a number of form factors. So the smallest form factor there being an OEM board level radio. We also offer a full size board level radio. We offer enclosed radios. And then we also offer a DIN rail mountable IO solution. The entire Zoom family is 900 megahertz. So in the US, in Canada, that's specifically 902 to 928. And it allows you to power up a system without obtaining a license. We are limited on the output power, and that output power is one watt from the radio with 900 megahertz. But even with one watt in the unlicensed space, you can accomplish miles of uh, data connectivity. The speeds that you'll see on the Zoom product range from 115 kilobits per second up to four megabits per second. So this is a little different from previous generation uh, FreeWave radios, where we have a lot more granularity in the dial between the speed and the distance. 
the trade-off in general with wireless technology is you can go fast or you can go far and the trade-off can be adjusted by increasing or decreasing that speed so if you need more range you can set the radio to a lower speed and you'll be able to accomplish that the security features it is a frequency hopping spread spectrum platform and uh, what that means is every time the radio transmits a piece of data it will change channels send another piece of data and then change channels again so it's very difficult to intercept or to jam um, a radio system that continuously changes channels we also offer sssh we have encryption and we have a number of other features to protect the product from cyber attacks and other malicious intents. Moving to the bottom here, some of the power consumption. So at 12 volts in transmit, you'll see around 350 milliamps, three, excuse me, 355 milliamps of current usage. And when the radio is idle, you'll see around 75 to 100 typically. So this is great for solar powered applications that it is a low power consumption device that allows you to have a smaller solar panel and also a smaller size battery. It is an industrial grade device. So this is a C1D2. And for those of you who work with the oil and gas sector, you'll know that there are specific requirements for environments that could contain um, gases that could explode or be ignited. So the C1D2 rating will be suitable for a lot of applications in oil and gas there. The operating temperatures range from negative 40 C to 75 C. So pretty much any environment you could think of in temperature rating will be able to cover that. Freewave has systems installed in Saudi Arabia. We have systems that are installed in Alaska. So the radios will continue to operate no matter what the temperature is and they're actually tested for this before they leave our manufacturing facility. Our last point here on the slide is a new addition to the Zoom family, and that is called Zoom Edge. And what Zoom Edge allows us to do is take I.O. points from a Zoom Edge radio and publish that via MQTT. And for those of you who aren't familiar with MQTT, it is an Internet of Things protocol. It's a more modern protocol that allows you to easily exchange data with modern cloud platforms like AWS. As I noted before, the Zoom Link platform is a radio and it's a server. So you can run applications actually on the radio. This is a huge advantage in that it future proofs your networks. So when you're making an investment in a wireless solution, the typical lifespan is gonna be somewhere in the 10 to 20 year range. So it's an extremely long sales cycle. And maybe the hardware that you're using in conjunction with the ZoomLink radios has all the features you need today, but does that hardware meet the needs of tomorrow? So if you have a close-ended application, and let's say the vendor is not providing an update or a capability that you want, the ZoomLink radio can be loaded with software to accommodate some of those shortcomings in other applications. So by having this flexible platform at the edge, you're not only investing in a wireless system, but you're investing in a computing architecture that allow you to add capability down the road if need be. Taking a look at other products here. So there's a few different categories on this slide. We talked about the Zoom Link platform and the radio picture there is the Z9PE. So the Z stands for Zoom Link, nine is for 900 megahertz, P is for plus, which means ethernet and freewave speak and the E is for enclosed. So if you were to purchase the ZoomLink radio without the enclosure, it would be simply Z9-P. As we mentioned, it's 902 to 928. The range is up to 60 miles. That's highly variable depending on 
the terrain, the antenna heights, what type of antennas you're using. But if you have any concerns about the link distance, FreeWave offers a pre-sale engineering service that can help you crunch those numbers to ensure you're going to get the range that you desire. The second category here is the Zoom IQ hardware. And this is the Zoom Link platform with the radio removed. So if you wanna do some type of edge computing, but you don't need the wireless connectivity, you can use a Zoom IQ unit. Thirdly is the Zoom Edge product. And the Zoom Edge is a new product for the Zoom Link platform. And this product allows us to add IO into new or existing Zoom Link networks. The Zoom Edge unit is a DIN rail mountable radio. You can see there's uh, three pieces of hardware there. The lower layer there is the actual base, and that has serial and Ethernet ports and also a Zoom Link radio to talk to a Z9PE gateway, for example. And the IOEX expansion modules that you stack on the top allow you to add an almost unlimited number of IO channels. For those of you out there that aren't familiar with IO, IO is simply uh, sensors or devices that are not serial or ethernet based. So, so maybe you have a, a simple sensor uh, that's for high level detection in a tank uh, float switch. So when that level goes high, it just closes a contact like a normally, you know, normally open, normally closed type switch. You can connect that to a digital input on the Zoom Edge unit. You can also connect pressure sensors and many different other types of sensors you'll see used across various industries. We're really excited about Zoom Edge and we'll get to that in detail in just a little bit here. Lastly on the slide is the Wave Contact platform. So Wave Contact is different from other free wave products in that it also includes the sensor in some of the endpoints. So there is a battery powered uh, wireless pressure sensor that we offer. Um, there's a totalizer for oil and gas environments. What really sets wave contact apart is that sometimes it also includes the sensor and all of the endpoints are battery powered and they're outdoor mountable. So it's a different type of tool for a different type of job, but it allows you to incorporate IO into networks where you may not have a panel or other reliable power source for that device. Moving into our classic category here, these are traditional free wave radios that you may have seen in the field if you've worked in industry in any of the verticals we previously discussed. The FGR3 is our current 900 megahertz serial line. So this is not an ethernet radio, it's purely a serial radio. It's one of FreeWave's best sellers. Uh, I would estimate there's probably over half a million of those installed around the world in various applications. And it's a product that made FreeWave famous for that reliable long range connectivity. And it's not uncommon for me to encounter networks for serial radios that are 10 radios all the way up to 700 or 800 radios. In the middle category is the LRS 455, licensed radio system 455. And that is a licensed radio that will provide more range, but slower speeds. So FreeWave also has an offering in the license space. Lastly is the GX, and that's our 2.4 gigahertz serial radio. So that's serial only, um, but it is 2.4. 2.4 gigahertz is widely used around the world for unlicensed communications. So we've been talking about 900 megahertz so far, and that can be used in the US, Canada, and some other countries, but a lot of countries in the EU and in Asia are only allowed to use 2.4. So this is a serial product for those types of environments. Moving on, let's talk a little bit about Zoom Edge and IO, which I previously touched upon. 
So Zoom Edge, this is the newest member of the Zoom product family. And it allowed us to create a base where we can add IO in the field. So the types of IO that we support, analog in, analog out, digital in, and digital outs. And we support up to 15 expansion modules on top of a Zoom Edge unit. Uh, I've only seen three used uh, in the field for a total maximum. Um, so essentially it's an unlimited amount of IO uh, because we support 15 there. And each of those IOEXs has 12 channels on it. The channels available are configurable. So some of the channels are universals that can be configured. Uh, some of them are input only. It just depends on was what specific IOEX module you purchase. So the most popular is the 4422. We also offer the 4404. It just depends upon what your IO requirements are. There's a lot of flexibility in that solution. Um, and as I mentioned, you can stack up to 15 there per base. This is nice because it's a drop into existing Zoom Link networks, or you could start a new Zoom Link network and have IO present there. The configuration for these is done through a web interface. So you log into the Zoom Edge unit, it will detect how many expansion modules are attached to it. It'll show you the current values and also the configuration for those values. Here's an example of the Zoom Edge units using a number of other FreeWave software pieces here. So in this example, we have an analog output, we have an analog input, uh, a digital input, and a digital output there. So the analog output is we're providing a value within a specific range, one to five volts, four to 20 milliamps to control a position here. Maybe it's a valve we're opening and closing, but that would be an analog out. An analog in is we're detecting a range of values there. So maybe we're looking at pressure or the position of a valve. In the digital input there, we're simply looking if something is open or closed. And lastly, on the digital out, we're telling something if it's going to be on or off. So maybe we want to illuminate an alarm light if some specific condition is present. All of those IO points are connected to the IOEX channels here on top of the Zoom Edge units. Now, natively, this uses the Modbus TCP protocol. So for those of you who are not familiar with Modbus, it's an industrial communications protocol. Um, it's been around longer than I have. Uh, it's used across many different industries. But because it is a legacy protocol, it also has some shortcomings. To make up for those shortcomings, FreeWave has also made those I.O. points available via an API. So you could write your own uh, software to connect to our REST API to see those I.O. values. You could also use the FreeWave Edge software. And FreeWave Edge allows you to publish those I.O. points in that new IoT protocol, MQTT. And you can then publish that to a broker where you can disperse that data into different cloud services. So we integrate with AWS, with Autosol, with Ignition. You can also do custom applications. So if you wanna write something in Python to interact with IO, you can do that. You can also use Node-RED. Um, I have personally used Node-RED for prototyping different types of applications. And by just knowing a little bit of JavaScript, you can actually do some really cool things in Node-RED. We also support OpenPLC. So OpenPLC is a software program that mimics the capabilities of a hardware PLC that can be loaded on the Zoom Edge unit there. All of these abilities rely on a Linux-based operating environment. So if you're familiar with Linux and you've written applications that run on Linux, you'll feel very at home using our IQ environment. 
as I mentioned, there's a REST API available. And here's a screenshot of what the channel configuration for Zoom Edge looks like there. So you can see the reading, the current value, the API key, the Modbus address, and how many registers it is, and so on. So it'll show you the current reading. It'll also allow you to configure it. You can set when the screen refreshes. This represents a great leap forward for FreeWave IO products. So previously, older generation FreeWave IO products did not have the capability to display the current value for that channel. So now you're able to see the current value um, and you can also set a specific refresh rate for it. The API key is the key that you would target with your REST API if you wanted to integrate that data into a third-party software solution. So lots of different options here. Most people are familiar with Modbus. Most system integrators are comfortable in using Modbus. But if you're looking to do something different, if you're looking to do something cloud-based, we also have all the hooks to support those newer technologies. And looking at the big picture of this here, so we have a ZoomLink gateway, that's a Z9PE, and we have three endpoints here. So you can mix and match depending upon your needs. We have two Z9PE endpoints, and those are talking to generic industrial devices. Maybe it's an HMI, maybe it's a PLC. On the bottom here, our third endpoint is actually a Zoom Edge endpoint, and that's where we're connecting our sensors is to that unit. So they're all part of the same wireless network there. They all have a ZoomLink radio. And how you visualize that data or integrate that data into your system depends upon really what you wanna use. FreeWave is pretty flexible. Um, as I mentioned, you can publish to AWS via MQTT. You could use the API or you could write your own application. This goes back to that theme of future-proofing your solution. When you invest in a wireless platform, be sure not to just invest in that wireless technology, but also the software hosting capability in case you want us to do something different in the future there. Lastly, to complete our diagram here, as I just click the next button, you'll see the remote management. So FreeWave now offers a remote management platform for Zoom devices. And the configuration for those Zoom devices we're gonna talk about in the next slide. We talked about the Edge Data Platform that allows you to interrogate those IO channels and publish via MQTT. A big picture example of everything we've spoken about so far is for gas measurement, or it could be just some type of generic uh, pipeline management or detection there. So along a pipeline, you'll have a number of sensors. Uh, those could be pressure sensors, they could be fault detection, something of that nature. You can use the Zoom Edge unit to directly connect to those sensors. And on the Zoom Edge unit, you can be using the FreeWave Edge program to publish via MQTT. Um, you could be using the API as we spoke about. You could be hosting your own application to interact with that data. The uh, options there are, are pretty much limitless. And the type of wireless sensors you'll see connected there, as I mentioned, flow rate, pressure, battery level, vibration, um, all of these different points of data can be incorporated into a Zoom Edge solution. Okay, we're gonna move on to remote management, which I just briefly touched upon. So in remote management, there are a number of devices that you have across the network. So when we deal with industrial wireless solutions, we're talking about miles of separation between devices, and you know we could be talking about 10 devices, we could be talking about 10,000 devices. So it becomes a real challenge to manage these systems that are separated by great distances, and there's also a high number of units themselves. So what remote management with FreeWave allows you to do 
It allows for a cloud hosted software platform that keeps track of all your devices in the field. It will show you the health of a unit. You can monitor uptime, you can monitor power consumption, signal level, uh, reflected antenna power. Um, all of those data points can be monitored remotely in the cloud. And you can also push firmware updates remotely. So remote management is for fault detection, health monitoring, and then also device management. And as I mentioned, you can update firmware, or let's say you have a custom application that you wanna load onto all of the radios in your network. Using remote management, we can deploy software from the cloud instead of having to drive around to each site and physically plug into that specific radio. So this adds a lot of advantages to industrial networks there. The screenshot of it here um, on the left, you can see there's a dashboard, there's specific alerts or messaging. You can do data transfer if you wanna move firmware or move maybe a custom application. It allows you to store all the serial numbers, um, it's just a very complete solution for anything you would want to do with a field of remotely networked devices there. So this is now available from FreeWave. Uh, this is something that we've been working on for a while. If you have any questions about the specific capabilities of remote management, um, give us a call and we'd be happy to discuss that with you. The remote management really completes the solution that we've been talking about so far. And to summarize everything we've talked about, we have the ability to move data over long distances. We have the ability to move that data reliably in a number of different environmentally zoned uh, applications, temperature ratings, things like that. We have the ability to interact with that data, to publish it to the cloud. And then we also have this capability of monitoring all of the ZoomLink devices that support all of these features. At this time, I'm gonna kick it over to any questions that may have popped up during the presentation. Okay, I'm gonna check the chat window there. So